Acute respiratory distress is the most common reason for the admission in the hospital in both the neonates and children. We are going to talk about the newer form of non-conventional or non-invasive ventilation called RAM Canada ventilation. So what is specific key features of RAM Canada ventilation? It has bi-nasal prongs. It has two short prongs. It allows the delivery of oxygen and airflow. And it has a high flow capability, reduces the work of breathing and it improves the oxygenation. It provides process support. That means it keeps the airway open. It also very comfortable being less invasive and better tolerated by infants and children. So when to use this modality in neonates and children? It's used in mild to moderate respiratory distress, in neonates in respiratory distress syndrome and pneumonia, in children pneumonia and bronchiolitis, Sometimes it can be used in adults with mild to moderate distress resulting from pneumonia. RAM cannula ventilation can also be used in the post extubation period to prevent reintubation. Why to use RAM cannula ventilation? Number one, it offers non invasive ventilation. That means needs minimal setup, no need for sedation, and it's well tolerated, and there is no interfaces needed except nasal cannula. What are the modalities you can use using RAM cannula? Number one, you can provide high flow nasal cannula, high flow nasal cannula ventilation, and you can use non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. You can provide CPAP, BiPAP and other advanced modes such as NAVA can be delivered using RAM cannula. When you use CPAP, you have to keep the pressures higher enough so that it can deliver pressures in to the terminal airways or keep the airway open. Typical range for pediatric illness is 7 to 10 centimeter of water. The pressure you delivered will be lost around the nares and as well as from the open mouth. When you use BiPAP, keep the expiratory pressure 7 to 10 centimeter of water and pressure control has to be 8 to 10 centimeter above the peep. And of course, you need to check saturation, air entry and the work of breathing. So what are the complications and concerns? Even though it is very rare, it can cause gastric insufflation. The most common complications or issues come out of RAM cannula is skin breakdown and nasal septal injury. Occasionally, it can cause pneumothorax. So, securing RAM cannula is very important because if it moves back and forth, it can cause injury to the septum and so that the children also cannot be able to tolerate. Not because of the flow, not because of the cannula, because of the septal injury. So, you need to use either sticky dots or tiger them to secure the RAM cannula. And monitor the septal breakdown and position of the cannula uh, with every shift or more often. This picture says how it can be secured so that the patient can be comfortable with it. This picture is in neonate and the pediatric patients with RAM cannula in place. The RAM cannula is available for different settings in neonates micro preemie, preemie, newborn, and infant sizes. They are all color-coded. In pediatrics, it's available in 
three different sizes. Again, they are all color coded. Other important tips for using RAM candle. The ideal prong size should fill about 80% of the nares. Insert the prongs into the patient nares, leaving a small gap between the septum and the base of the prongs. Secure the cannula to the face and the tubing with the cannula holder. So as with any other airway management, make sure the emergency equipment is ready when you are doing a RAM Kerala ventilation. Skin protection is paramount when you're securing the nasal cannula ventilation. Place a duodenum over the cheeks and also the bony prominences. Put a tegradum over the duodenum so that it's easier for manipulating the cannula. And skin checks need to be done with every shift and also every four hours whenever you do care for the patient. The effective ventilation, of course, needs to be checked for oxygenation and ventilation and the work of breathing. It's preferable to keep the head end of the bed raised to aid the partial drainage of secretions. What about feeding? Yes. You can do a nasal cannula feeding while you are doing ram cannula ventilation. If you are doing high flow alone, if the patient is able to take a pure feeds, you can use it. When you are doing positive pressure, it's preferable to use continuous feeding through. Yep. Perfect, there you go. There we go. This is the ram cannula end connected to ventilator tubing. Our nava is just simply one of the modes on the servo ventilator. And nava is just the patient's innovation of the phrenic nerve who brings is the trigger versus the flow or any pressure like other vent modes are. So this one's non-invasive nava because it is the ram cannula versus an ET tube. And then we literally just set levels. Higher levels, the machine does more work. Lower levels, the baby does more work. And otherwise we just set a peep and an oxygen concentration and then we set backup settings so that if the machine, if the baby does not breathe 
and a specific set time, the apnea time here, they just increased to 20 seconds. Um, if the baby does not, is, is apnea for greater than 20 seconds, the machine actually will flip into the backup mode, and which is the pressure control, and it would be like a non-invasive puffs ventilation to get him to stimulate to breathe again. So this is just backups. Um, otherwise, there's no set rate. It's all what the baby does, what senses it. Unless he goes apneic, then it's controlled at whatever the rate is set for the backup. What is EDA trigger? EDI trigger is the sensitivity of the EDI catheter that is in the baby's stomach. Um, it is set for to achieve the right grafting and the right flow here. You want this pattern to be decent. He's just kind of crazy right at the moment. Um, but so if it's set at 0.2, it just has to sense that it's a 0.5 pullback, essentially, as soon as it senses that much. And I, as I recall, this is volts. So, no innovation is volts, right? Um, so it's, it's voltage there that it senses the change of. And then it says, oh, he's taking a breath, and it just give him a little bit of support up until the level. How long you have been using this uh, NAV Nava uh, with oh. RAM Canada? Good grief, um, two years maybe, at least. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are you guys are happy with using Ram Canada Nava? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, what other things you can do with Nava, uh, with the Ram Canada? Oh, we do straight CPAP um, on the different, on the Hamilton, different ventilator, not Nava, you would do non-invasive, which is just pressure control settings and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's almost like when we do it with the Nava, it's almost just like a stimulation toy. I mean, with the with the RAM, it's like a, a stimulation tool. So within RAM Kenla, you can do Nava, you can do CPAP, you can do high flow, and you can do NAPPB. NAPPB yeah. Anything else? We, um, what about the... With our high flows, mm -hmm. our tubing is different. The RAM does not interface with our high flow tubing. Mm -hmm. So we actually have the different cannulas for that. Okay. The RAM cannula could be a regular cannula okay. off of the wall too. Sounds good. All right, thank you so much. You know,